Okay, today, um, this is going to be fun. I love having conversations with interesting people. And truth be told, this gentleman right here is extremely interesting. Some would call him controversial. Some would call him non-traditional. Many would call him hypocritical. But I guess I'll let him speak for itself. Please welcome Pastor Thaddeus Matthews, a.k.a. the Cussing Pastor. Pastor Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you for your program. Nah, and, and, and thank you so much for your time, brother. I appreciate you. Okay, um, let, let's start with your background real quick. What, what kind of child were you? What kind of child was I? Mm -hmm. Child is so damn long, it's hard for me to tell you what kind of shit. I'm about to be 66 years old, so to tell you what kind of child I was. Now you, you're taking me way back in retrospect. Uh, I guess average, uh, average. Uh, I grew up in what is called North Memphis. Uh, my mother was 16 years old when I was born. Um, sound like Mary and Jesus, don't it? Um, I was raised by my uh, my grand aunt and my great grandmother to her passing. Uh, hell, I'm just a normal child. I was mischievous. I was managed, uh, but I was smart because they had me in books. Naturally, I was in church. In fact, church is the first place that I even remember being okay um so i when i look at my childhood i got to say that the childhood that i had was a normal childhood okay beautiful um you come from a two parent household no i don't hell i didn't know who my daddy was till about Shit, maybe about 10 years ago. I, uh, in my household, I was raised by strong women uh, that motivated me. My auntie that I lived with and grew up with was the owner of the first uh, beauty, Black-owned beauty and supply business. That was before the, the, the Mexicans and the Koreans and all of them. Uh, came into play. I remember as a little boy having to go to all of the beauty shops in this area and over in Arkansas and Mississippi delivering uh, supplies. So I didn't even know my father's name for some years. I can remember the only time that I physically put my eyes on my father. I had to be eight or nine years old and uh, I was in TV. I was in the room watching TV. I, I never will forget it. It was a Green Hornet and Cato. So, you know, I, hell, I'm, I'm taking you back in time now. Um, and this man came to the house. And they called me out. I'm watching Cato and Green Hornet. And you called me to meet this man. And uh, he said something to me, and I was very rude to him. I don't remember now what I said, but he said he, I do remember he said, I'll whoop you. And I, I remember telling him that if you ain't been whooping me before, you damn sure ain't going to do it today. So I, uh, that's my only meeting of him. I, um, about 10 years ago, uh, I was at a place that I did business with one of my advertisers. And a guy came in and said, I'm your cousin. So you ain't no cousin, man. I don't know you. He said, uh, this, and the guy himself was my cousin too. And 
they said, he said, he's your close to your, he, your daddy. He was close to your daddy. I said, oh. I, I mean, I wasn't excited about it because as a child, I look at it now and think that maybe some things could have been different in my life had a man been there. But hell, I didn't miss nothing. So he said, your daddy died. I said, oh, oh, okay. Tell me where I'm supposed to cry, start crying at. Um, so he says, uh, I know your daddy. Your daddy was a good man. He just died. And I'm, I'm going to bring you some funeral programs by him. And I said, it's okay. So I got the funeral programs. And I looked at the you know, we always get this picture on black films programs. Mm-hmm. Yep, so yep. Was there any of me and him? Because the only question that I've ever had about a daddy or a father was how much of him was me? I know I was like my mama. I knew my mama was a great cusser. Uh, my mother was musically inclined. Uh, my mother spoke her mind. She was very bold bold in her conversations. But I wondered what part of the D, the N, and the A was me. So I read his funeral program, and I saw that we had a lot of things in common, a lot of the same accomplishments that he had made that I, um, I, I had made in life as well. But to say that I miss a father, um, I couldn't say that I did. I, w- would I be a different Thaddeus th- than I am now? I can't say uh, because that's a part of life I'll never know. Um, how long have you been in the ministry? I think I was about 16. About 16. Yeah. 16 when you started preaching? Yeah. I was probably preaching before then. I accepted, as we call the call, at about 16. I'd been in church all my life. Uh, I was teaching Sunday school when I was eight years old. Uh, but I started preaching. I was in that first era of real young preachers. So I was about 16 years old. Okay. Did, did you ever go to seminary school or to any type of theology school? As a young as a youngster, no. Now no, I'm talking about over the years. Presently, I have a doctorate uh in humanities uh from the Sacramento Theological School and College. And they really use my life experiences as my thesis and my criteria for a doctorate degree. So I am Dr. Thaddeus Matthews. Understood. Uh, Just for my own uh, understanding, what denomination are you? Now. Excuse me? No, now. I'm not denominational. You're non-denominational. Yeah. Okay. I grew, up as a Baptist. I grew up as a Baptist. Okay. Uh, I was in the Baptist church. But as I got older and started knowing for myself, stopped listening for from what I call the bullshit from the pulpit and started studying for myself. I understand that God is not denominational. God ain't no Baptist. He ain't no Methodist. He ain't no member of the Church of God in Christ. So I don't cater to a denomination. I believe in God. I believe in his son. 
And I even believe in the Holy Ghost. But I don't base it on a theory or ideology of a particular denomination. Yeah, I just heard you, as you're so well known for, just curse. Said the bull crap no, on the pulpit. No, I said I cuff. I don't curse. There's a difference. Okay, what, what what's the difference? The difference they're, is, they're just is, synonyms of one another. Okay, well, maybe to you, the cussing is when I'm. I may call you uh, a black motherfucker. Okay, <laughs> but when I say the black motherfucker ain't nothing. He's never going to be nothing. He's never going to amount anything. I've cursed you. I've cursed you and cursed your life. But the word cussing is what I am. So I'm not the cursing pastor. I'm the cussing pastor. I'm just like Peter. I'll cut your head off and pee down your neck. Understood. Okay. okay, thanks for clearing up. You know something? I actually heard you once before say Jesus himself was a cusser. Where did you even get that from? Well, do you think, now, he probably didn't use the words that I used, but don't you think in, in we, when we look at ancient days, don't you think that those who lived in the ancient days, we know that Peter was. Mm -hmm. He does not identify it as, as a cussler. But don't you think that we know that Jesus got angry? Do you think that when Jesus chased the merchants out of the temple, he said, Now, will you nice fellas get on out the temple? Uh, will y'all go ahead on? You've, you've turned my house into a den of thieves. Jesus, or Yahshua, who is his really name, his real name, don't you think that Jesus addressed that angrily? Addressing some angrily and cussing, because most people consider cussing a sin. And wait a minute, wait a minute, brother Fred. Okay. Most people assume that it's, it is a sin. Why must I assume that because you assume that? Well, I don't think it's an assumption. It, 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 it is common knowledge. Using no, no, no. It's common knowledge for who, brother? It's common knowledge for, 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 who? for the world at large. Like, like using no, profanity. No, no. See, I've been in the midst of so-called great preachers that'll call you a motherfucker. Okay? Son of a bitch. What okay. preachers? So, so do you think that because you use terminologies or words that other folk don't like, that that makes you any like a person that God still loves? I did not say that. In, I didn't say that. I don't give a damn what folks think and their opinions are. Okay. The only person that can hold me responsible for anything spiritually is the God I serve. Okay. And, and if you don't mind, allow me to, to finish my point. Sure. You mentioned in the past that Jesus himself, the almighty, was a cusser. And what I'm saying is, the Jesus that was taught to me into the world is without sin. So unless you are telling me cussing is not a sin, I don't know how you justify saying Jesus was out there cussing. I can't. Wait a minute, I haven't said that Jesus is just out there cussing, but do, do I think that Jesus used some terminology that you know nothing about? Yes. Do I think that sin, cussing is a, is a sin? No. Now, if you think that and you comfortable with that, so on. That's, that's what you think. So you don't believe that cussing is a Man, sin? Man, see, see how many times I got to say that? 
How many times do I need to repeat? I was okay, so, so is, is cussing for you, is this something you've done all your life? All my life. When I, when I was born, April 1st, 1957, 1230, at John Gaston Hospital here in Memphis, I peeked my head out and said, where the fuck am I? Okay, right now, you know something. Right now, you're sitting at your church, correct? No. You're not sitting. At, so I got to ask you. You, you, you are, you're the cussing I'm pastor. Yo, I'm in my studio in my house. Okay. The you, the building, I'm not doing, no longer I'm doing virtual since the pandemic. Uh, and after I spent half a million dollars of my, of my own money uh, <laughs> for ministry uh, and the pandemic hit, I've been doing it from virtually. Okay. So you no longer have a physical building. No longer have a physical building. Understood. How large is your online congregation? Well, thousands listen to me every week and every night. So I guess that will be my congregation. If if you don't mind me asking, because, again, I, I started this conversation off by saying you are very non-traditional. You are. I, I don't think it would be. No argument there. No, no. Who who are these people who are following you? Are, are, are they following you for the word of God? Or are they following you because you you you're person and you're arguing and 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 you are saying things that the average preacher, pastor, minister would never say from the pulpit. Well, first of all, I'm not average. Second of all, my shows that are aired daily are not full of preaching. Preaching is not the spewing of religious religious words. I deal with issues. I deal with all types of issues. I'm dealing now in Memphis. I'm the one that broke the story on a young man by the name of Tyree Nichols, the young man that was beaten yep. in Memphis uh, by five black police officers. There are so many things in this country and in the black community that's possible that I'm not going to sit every night on the end and talk about, oh, he died. No, no. I ain't got to pull my ear. We all know that he died. But when are we as a people going to raise? When are we going to get up off our damn knees and do something with that law? We waiting on you to come and he waiting for you to get up off your ass and make a change yourself. So that's it's, why that's why I'm not traditional. For many years, I was until I started reading and studying myself. I believe like many of you that go to your missionary Baptist church and your church of God in crisis, you, you have not studied for yourself. And you have only the nature of your pastor. You take it on his nature. You, you take it on everything that he Teaches you like he teaches you, and many people go with this. If it ain't in the King James Version of the Bible, don't believe it. Not knowing that King James was a homosexual, uh, but you you hate the sissy in the church, and you read the word out Bible sissy, and you say that don't. Believe nothing that's in, not in the Bible. That everything that Jesus did is in them six or six books, even though he's absent from 12 to 30. I, I guess I don't know what Jesus went he, he, since you said uh, ain't nothing. In, don't you think Jesus did something in the missing years? And then when you go, go to the book of John, 
the last chapter of John and almost the last verse of John, it says, if everything that Jesus did was could be contained in books, there would not be enough books on earth to contain them. So this fits me with this thought of you know Jesus and you you know everything that Jesus did, whose real name is Yahshua, not Jesus, because there was no letter J in the Greek or the Hebrew language 2,000 and 20 years. And the name Yahshua was the name that was used for Jesus. We accept the word Jesus, and I ain't got no problem with the wordology. But too many of us are worried about having the word on paper, and we ain't got it here, brother. We ain't got God here. Because if we as a people had God here, Man, we wouldn't have all the killings that's going on in this year. I was talking this morning. I just got off the radio. 11, 11 years, I do. A, I play the blues and Southern Soul every morning on the radio. 11 years old. 11 years old. Since the beginning of the year, been arrested 19 times. Car theft, burglary, strong arm robbery at 11 years old. And the church, all you, all you want gives me that bullshit on Sunday morning, the 11 year old, while the preacher on Sunday morning getting your tithes and the offerings and telling you he died and he rose on the third day. Uh, and that's another story. Uh, here in Memphis, an 11-year-old, 11, not 12, 13, or 14, an 11-year-old has been arrested 19 times this year. Burglaries, car thefts, more than one, strong arms, robberies. Well, you, 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 you want to talk about God and what we need to do for his people. But hell, you ain't doing nothing about these sorry ass mamas in these in our communities and these no good fathers in our community that are not raising their children. You think that Sunday morning is it? That's what the so-called quote unquote Christian wants to do. He wants to all only serve God on Sunday. But what about your fellow man? What about these children? What about raising up them up in the way they should go and not the way that they want to go? That's my message, brother. I don't give a fuck about having pastor's anniversaries and, and, and having the little quiet day and the, the big quiet day, uh, the yellow hat Sunday. That's, that's, it's all about money, brother. That's all about money. It ain't about lies. It, it, you go to church. I talk about financial empowerment. You go to church on Sunday morning. You get a little tithes and offerings. And then when you leave church, you can't even go by church's chicken and get your two-pack. Because you've been submitted to church robbery. And nothing has been put back into you how to fill your pockets up again. Everything you said, I agree with. I do. But <laughs> I was, job, you, you know I'm going to come back with a but because the job of a pastor, irregardless to what's going on in the community or not, and I, and I, and I believe the church should be on the front lines to everything happening in our communities. I do. But your job See, first of all, you can't. First of all, you can't tell me what my job is. Okay, what I understand a pastor's job to be. Okay. How about that? okay. What I understand a pastor's job to be is how we can make it 
to the to 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 heaven, to the promised land, to 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 the pearly white gates, whatever you and, want. And, to call and, why, how, why, the, the, why, and why do you think that? Why did that? Is that all that you think that is a pastor's responsibility? I think that's a pastor's main responsibility. You know, that's, 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 so been told. that's the bullshit you've been told. Okay, hold hold hold. No, so, because you can, will tell you to go. See, I, I preach in nightclubs. Okay. But aren't you trying to get people's souls saved? That, that, sure. that's, that's a, Wait a minute. First of all, I can't save your soul. I said you, the, the job of the pastor, to my understanding, so is, to, you, is, to, is to... You need to get you a new understanding. Okay. First of all, I can't... Educate I, me. I can't Educate. save your soul. I can't save your soul. The scripture says in Romans 10, if thou, that be you, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, the word says what? Thou what? Come on, brother friends. Thou what does it? You the pastor, I'm not. Okay. Well, the word says thou shall be saved. Mm. Believing, admitting, acknowledging that God raised his son from the dead is the only criteria for salvation. We make it comp we make it hard. We want you to be on the Mullins bench and fall out and then throw the rug on you, run around the church till you get tired, then you act like you're happy, cause but you're tired. But there's only one fundamental for salvation. Believing, acknowledging. The word says, thou shall be. It doesn't say maybe, not uh, according to what somebody else thinks. If you can believe in your heart, admit it, that God has raised his son from the dead. If you can believe that the word says, thou Shall be safe. Okay, so 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 let me challenge you there. Be, you, you 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 know the Bible in and out. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm okay, still... do you know? Do you know Acts two thirty eight? What does it say? I don't have my Bible in front of me. Right this man. Re repent and be baptized, every one of you. Sure. D d hear me, because you're saying all you got to do is is. Uh, acknowledge, or, or I forget the word that you said, and you said from from what Acts two thirty, and I'm I'm gonna pull it up because I don't want to misquote the, the the word here. Okay, is that fair enough? Yes. Give me one sec, so so um, I can pull that up, but um, I I, I think it's a little. I, I, I was always taught that it was a little more than that than what you're saying. Well. Well, then let's take then, then Paul needs to take Romans 10 out then. Okay, so I'm going to read to you directly from Acts 2.38. Mm -hmm. Then Peter asked unto them, then Peter said unto them, repent mm -hmm. and be baptized every one of you for the, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission mm -hmm. of your sins and ye mm -hmm. shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So where's the repenting in your version? Where's the baptism in your version? I, I, I guess maybe you, I just thought you, do know, you do know that baptism is not a criteria of you being saved, don't you? No, that I, was, I, I've never heard that, that before. That was, well, that was Peter. Now, Peter said that, right? Did Jesus yeah. say that? He, he was one of the apostles. He, he, uh, he was spread, Peter was one of the apostles. He was spread. Okay, but the did Jesus say that? I repeat all the time, Lord, I'm sorry for calling that motherfucker a motherfucker. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for some of the things I did. Okay. Uh, so you, you're getting hang up and you're trying to hang me up 
in my time with this being saved thing. I'm saved. I still like pretty women. I still smoke me a good cigar. I'll drink me some cognac. All of that does not take away from my relationship with God. If you are uncomfortable with that, then it's you, brother. It's not it that I'm uncomfortable. I'm again, I can't say it, but so many times in this conversation, you are very non tradition. It's, it's, it's not about what I believe. It, 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 I'm literally trying to understand. You got to see God for yourself, brother. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. God is not going to hold me accountable but for what no. prayer is. God's God, going to hold God is going to hold, hold on. Hold on. No. Pastor, you're out of line. Hold on. You are out of line. Okay. You, when you take on the title of a pastor uh -huh. and you are out here preaching, uh huh. All of those who you are preaching to, you are being held accountable for their souls. That God is going to hold you accountable. <laughs> no. If I tell you, let me put it like this. If I tell you prayers, see them trucks coming down the street? Yes, yeah, I, I see them trucks. See that 18 wheeler coming out there? Yeah, I, I see that that is. If you step out in front of that truck, it's going to knock your ass off. I don't believe it. And you step out in there and it knocks your ass off. Whose fault is it? I, I shared, with you, I shared with you what you didn't need to do. And that's what I do on my show every night. I share with people what they don't need to do. You are a free agent. You are under God, brother, you God gives you the opportunity every day to repent, do a sin, but repent and be godly sorry for that which you've done. So if I've given you the way and I've given you the road map and you don't follow it, God ain't going to hold me responsible for you walking out in front of that truck. But God don't is gonna hold okay. Friends, you, don't you're right. You you are right. I can't argue with that. But God but is you, gonna hold you trying, you, responsible. you trying to get uh not that ain't. I'm uncomfortable. I'm again I can't say it, but so many times in this conversation, you are very non-tradition. It's, it's it's not about what I believe. It, it, it's I'm literally trying to understand. You got to see God for yourself, brother. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. God is not going to hold me accountable but for what no. prayer is. God's going to God is going to hold on. Hold on. No. Pastor, you're out of line. Hold on. You are out of line. Okay. You, when you take on the title of a pastor uh -huh. and you are out here preaching. Uh-huh. All of those who you are preaching to, you are being held accountable for their souls. That God is going to hold you accountable. <laughs> no. If I tell you, let me put it like this. If I tell you prayers, see them trucks coming down the street? Yeah, I, I see them trucks. See that 18 wheeler coming out there? Yeah, I, I see that that is. If you step out in front of that truck, it's going to knock your ass off. I don't believe it. And you step out in there and it knocks your ass off. Whose fault is it? I, I, shared, with you, I shared with you what you didn't need to do. And that's what I do on my show every night. I share with people what they don't need to do. You are a free agent. You are under God, brother, you God gives you the opportunity every day to repent, do a sin, but repent and be godly sorry for that which you've done. So if I've given you 
the way. And I've given you the roadmap and you don't follow it. God ain't gonna hold me responsible for you walking out in front of that truck. But God don't is gonna hold okay. Friends, you, don't you, get you're right. You you are right. I can't argue with that. But God but is you, you trying you trying to get uh apparently you're a traditionalist. You 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 you're a member of uh, of the mindset of the uh traditional church. I'm not okay my so relationship the, with God is personal. I don't care what you think, I don't care what nobody else thinks. Okay, are you, uh, are, are you, are you uh, if you don't mind me asking, are, are you married? Yes. You are married. So, so in some and regards, in some do regards, I mean, do, 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 let me, allow me to just get my question out. I, I was trying to hear you, I'm sorry. In, in some regards, you are traditional. You're married. Correct? I wanted my, yeah, I, I'm married. And 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 I and I would like to believe you are faithful to your wife. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I've been married before and wasn't. Well, yes, I am at this point in my life, yes. So so I would assume at some point in your life you wasn't. And that's okay. We're all human. Yeah, yeah. I have heard you out of your own mouth refer to women as bees. Okay. And hold. And hold. Oh. Okay. Do you think that's appropriate to to refer to women as, as using the b word and calling them hoes? The word bitch. Don't say b because I know a whole lot of words to start with b's. That that that, that would be I, I, I deal I deal with many women that have bitch mentalities. So yeah, I say it. And what if I. Say like what do you mean old. mentality? What, what, what do you mean mentality? Bitch mentalities. You are a woman biologically, but you won't raise your children. You won't do nothing for your children. You go out here and have 29 and a half babies. And then all you got is a attitude of Somebody owes you something. So, yes, I use the word bitch. Do I use the word hoe? If you're out here giving your pussy away for free, yes. Yes. If you're out here fucking and, and you're creating babies, you know who you was getting on your show, right? I did. Don't look surprised. Don't look surprised. I'm who I am wherever I, I go. That's 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 a hoe. If you're out here giving your ass away and you have poor pussy management and you're bringing all these babies into this world and you're not uh, disciplining your children and you're just laying down with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, you're a hoe. Now you go on to the next point. Oh, okay. Um, has your approach been helpful? C c calling women out of their name? I understand through brother, your, brother, through your brother, eyes. Brother, brother yeah. I thought you called me to interview me on issues and things of that nature. It must be effective for me. Okay? I have thousands. Just on YouTube alone, I'll do over 150,000 a month. People die to listen to me every night. So it must be effective. People know who I am and they know that I don't pull no punches. And I don't normally sit there and try to placate and, and try to defend who I am and what I say. I say what I say and I meant what I say. If you don't like what I say, don't listen to me. That I, I, That's that's real simple. Don't view me. Don't listen to me on radio. Don't listen to me. Don't view my programs. Don't come on my pages and leave your comments because I'm who I am. And I'm only 
held accountable by one. And I tell the rest of the world, if you ain't feeding me, financing me, or fucking me real good, I really don't give a damn what you think. Okay. Uh, do you do you do you find that you get any support from other pastors? Not not from the people, but from men of God. If you're not feeding me, financing me, I'm fucking me. I really don't care. Let me let me tell you about other pastors. Uh huh. I don't get it invited, even when I had the big building. I don't get invited because to churches because I'm a radical. I've exposed a lot of preachers on my shows over the years. Frankie Ray and all them boys. Um, so I'm not held in high esteem in the pastoral groups. I'm not a member of any minister groups or anything of that nature. I have friends, or they call themselves my friends, um, where we go out to eat, we go out to drink, but you dare not let me up in your church because you are fearful of what the other group of guys are going to say. And I'm not in a position where I need any pastors okay. When I had the physical building, I didn't ask anybody permission. When I organized, and the name of the truth, church is the Naked Truth, Liberation and Empowerment Ministries. I didn't ask nobody's permission. I didn't go to Brother Pastor, do you think this is a good idea? I did it on my own. I used my own money. So I really don't give a damn about what other pastors really think. Would I like to go sometimes and associate with the brethren other than setting up at the bar where they, they are? Yes. Would I like to come and speak to their congregations? Yes. But I'm, I'm pretty much better by the, the Muslims than I am the Baptist folk and the Church of God and Christ folk. So, brother, I, you know, I don't have time to waste thinking about what other pastors do and what other pastors think about me. You know, I, I, I often hear you speak about... You must, you must watch me a lot, don't you? Do you think I would be sitting down talking to you if I didn't watch you? Oh, I, I find you to be a very, very fascinating human being. I do. Um, you, you don't share the opinions and the thoughts of many, and that's okay. But this was a conversation that I really wanted to have because I, I, I truly want to at least understand, uh, you know, religion, religion, Christianity, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it is... For many people, the word is the word is the word. It ain't mm -hmm. going to change for you, and it ain't going to change for me. Mm -hmm. I have seen you go against many of the, the, the common thoughts that we've all been brought up with mm -hmm. and uh, hold on to your truth. So, yes, I do watch you to answer your question. But uh, that being said, how you often speak about pastors, mm -hmm. even looking at women in their congregation or sleeping with women in their congregation. Yes. Is that just something you saying, or do you find that to be the truth amongst that world? Brother, what, how old did I tell you I was when I started? 16? You're 66. 
Okay, but I started at 16. I've been, man, I've been everywhere where preachers are. You know, it's like you could be setting up in my younger days when I was pastoring Baptist. You set up in the middle seat and it's offering time. And uh, you say, who that, who that woman right there? Oh, you can't bother her. That's the king's meat. You do know what the terminology means, doesn't you? Uh, no. Educate, educator, educators all. What, what do you mean by that? The king's meat is, that's my, my woman. I'm fucking her. That's my woman. You got bedrooms in churches now. Okay. This this old thing, look around your church. See how many children in your church look like your pastor. Got the same old big old head, just like your pastor. He looks just like your pastor. Preachers are men, brother. Didn't fall from heaven. They're not angelic. They have the right, same wants and desires as any man. I tell men that will come to me and say, God is taking the taste for a woman out of my mouth. I said, well, good. There's, there are some tastes I ain't asked God to take from me. I said, but brother, let me tell you this. If you don't like a big booty woman, nine times out of ten, you're like a big booty boy. So don't come to me with that hypocritical stuff of you don't like a woman. You know, and, and, and yes, friends, it goes on in the church. You know, you, you mentioned pastors liking big booty boys. Oh, and I don't even know if you're referring to pastors or just men in general. How, what is your thoughts on homosexuality in the church? Well, it must be prevalent. Look at the church. How many of your choir directors, how many of your choir members are homosexuals? And, and, and let me tell you this. The homosexual belongs in the church. Why? If you say that the church is a hospital and you say that the homosexual or the lesbian is sick, then you should be having prepared a prescription Sunday morning when that sick person gets to church. Or if you don't have a prescription, and I'm talking about the word, and I'm not talking about beating a homosexual over his head. You shouldn't be with no man. Nine times out of ten, he knows that he doesn't supposed to be there. But what are you giving them as relief, man? Are you are you telling them? Are there any programs in your church or in your ministry or in your word? that talks to the homosexual. We want to say that the homosexual is going to hell. But what about the backbiter? What about the fornicator? What about the, the sister that was with the pastor last night or the deacon that ain't her husband? We want to pick out sins what we call, or I call, the comfortable sins. I think that the homosexual is the church. I don't tell you what your lifestyle's going to be. You're going to be what you're going to be. I ain't got no heaven. I ain't got no hell, hell to put you in. Do I know homosexuals? Yes. One of my friends is probably one of the biggest trans women in this country. 
I've appeared on her television shows, T.S. Madison. I've been at T.S. Madison's home. Her mother has cooked for me at her home. It's not my lifestyle, but I'm not going to come in your house and say, oh, you are someone, you going to hell. If you know the word and you believe in the word, then it's up to you to make your decision, brother. But we got homosexuality in the church, every church. Some of it is closets. Then you got homosexuality in the pulpit. Big old bull looking men that were known to be homosexuals. James Cleveland sung a long time, I don't feel no way sad. But fall, were falling out for James Cleveland. They paid to go see James Cleveland, church folk. Well, it was well known that James Cleveland was homosexual. There are homosexual singers now. But I let you have your time with God. The Bible says, work out your own soul salvation, brother. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to hate you because you're homosexual. Just like I don't hate you and I know you're screwing on half the women in town. I don't hate you then. If there is no big sin and little sin, and you say that homosexuality is a sin, how can I hate you, brother, and not hate the other things that you do? Okay, you mentioned earlier, and I, I should have tackled it then. You said we all, many of us anyway, uh, read from the King James Version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. King James, according to you, was homosexual. Where, where did you even get that from? Research, brother. King James also wrote a book on demonology. Do the research. He just didn't figure ahead the King James Version of Scriptures where, where much of Scripture is not there. Do you think that everything is in 66 books? What about the canons? What about the lost books of the Bible? What about the Apocrypha? Do you study the lost books of the Bible? Yes. Okay, so it, most of us don't. What is What are some of uh, uh, the teachings in the lost books that you well, think that is contradictory to what we all know as the 66 books of the Bible? Well, let me, let me put it this way. You've read, let's go to Genesis. You remember Cain and Abel, right? Yes. Cain killed Abel, right? Yes. Then the Bible says, Cain went to the land of Nod. Remember? Yep. And he married his wife. Right? Correct. Now, in the, in the church, we were taught about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, right? That is correct. So why, where does the wife come in? You lost me. What? If the Bible says he went to the land of Nod and married his wife, uh -huh. we were told about Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve. Where did the wife come in? I don't know. Bring, bring this on home. What is the point you're making? The point is that when you read the lost books of the Bible, you find that when Cain and Abel were born, they both had twin sisters. 
And Cain married his twin sister. Do the research. See, we, huh? Go, 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 go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. And I don't have that book up in here with me right now. You will also find that Baby, one of the books of the lost books is called Infancy. And you find that even as an infant, Jesus was performing miracles. And when I talk about that, I, I, I compare Jesus to the story of Superman. Mm -hmm. We all know the story of Superman. Before he was Superman, he was Superboy. We all looked at the cartoons. When you look at the story of Superboy, you saw Superboy performing super deeds, right? Right. Isn't it logical then that little boy Jesus, who was all-knowing, all purpose, had his powers, that Jesus had his powers even as a little boy? But when you read the book of infancy, you find that this Jesus also performed miracles at that point. Get your copy. It's good reading. No, I I, I can believe that wholeheartedly. I, I I can. And speaking of Jesus, uh, what is your thoughts on uh the the the, the Jesus that I, I I guess the world has come to know? He he was painted by Michelangelo, uh, blonde hair, long blonde hair, beard, blue eyes. What's your, what's your thought on on that imagery? Who that white boy? That white boy, I yes. How how do you how do you read scripture and believe it's real? And you believe in that white boy with blonde hair and blue eyes. When in Revelation it says he got hair like lamb wool, feet like polished brass, eyes like balls of wire. You do know uh, that that white boy. Name is Caesar. Uh, wait a minute, Caesar. Damn, if I hadn't think Caesar, uh, not not Romero, God, no, Caesar. Uh, I get, I can't think of his last name now because you asked me. But when you do the research, you find that this Caesar, the white boy with the blonde hair. And the blue eyes was the homosexual lover of Michelangelo. Where in the world? Where did you get that from? I read. God damn, Chris. I okay. read. I research. Read it. Read for yourself. That's what the preacher said, y'all. Son, read. That's what he said. Read. I'm I'm absolutely gonna have to do some research after that because that is um that's a, that's, a, so that's a, when you when you worship that white boy you such you uh, worship an assistant. You, you know you know Pastor uh, Thaddeus that that's 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 a little harsh right there. No, I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that I don't disagree true. with you. It's it's the truth. I'm not saying that I don't disagree with you that that is not how Jesus looked. But to say he was I, I, I can't think of his last name now because I want to. Research and you'll find that he was a gay lover. 
of Michelangelo. But when you serve that blonde head, blue-eyed Jesus, you worship an assistant. Okay. Um, I, again, this is that that that's you know I you know as I said this on I was appearing on a national TV show, and I said that uh, I was on Tosh Porno, and uh, I said that it shocked them like dogs. It shocked them. I said, you want to talk about homosexuality in, in the church? And you bow down and worship a sister. Yeah, I never I never uh heard that one before. I will do my research based on what you but yeah, but I yeah, but I don't even know where to research that at, but I'm going to do a little digging, or maybe me and you can speak Google. Okay. White folks really for us. They took the encyclopedias from us, but we got Google. Let me ask you this. What, what, what is your thoughts on tithing, paying tithes? You know, it, it, it was, um, you know, many, many preachers, and, and I'll be very specific, at one point, uh, Creflo Dollar, mm-hmm. he was trying to raise enough money to get something like a $65 million jet. Uh, with the ties money of his congregation. What, where do you stand on that issue? Well, you, you see that in the New Testament, Jesus doesn't even talk about tithing, does he? He tells, you to, he tells you to kill. Okay? That Sunday morning, I call it, again, bullshit from the pulpit. Will a man rob read the entire book of Malachi? When you read the entire book of Malachi, you'll find out that Malachi was talking to the prophets and telling them to prepare a storehouse for those who are less fortunate. We use it as a gun to rob God's people. I am of the mindset and of the believing that giving, I think that one of the most powerful verses is one that we use and we say is negative. It says, be not deceived, don't be fooled, for God is not mobbed, he don't lie. Whatsoever a man soweth, then that next word is key. It says, that shall he reap. If you plant money, money grows. If you plant hatred, hatred grows. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Correct. So I'm the mindset of giving, and God gives back, and God gives back with interest. Some of these things that we have seen pastors do is a hustle, man. It's a hustle. So you be- you believe giving tithing or pastors uh, going from the Bible because it is written in the Bible uh, to pay tithes? You believe that's, that's what, awesome? what, what you say that Jesus came to fulfill the gospel, the fulfill. Okay, Jesus uh-huh. no mention of giving you paying no ten percent. And I mean, if that's what you want to give, if you feel as an individual that's your obligation, do it, brother. Do it. Okay. 
but, but does it, you know the Bible. Well, here's what here's how I've been blessed. I give, brother. And God in turns allow me to reap what I sow. I give. And see, I don't believe tithing, even in its nature or from the church, that it's obligates you, you to tithe in one place. You made a thousand dollars, you got ten percent a hundred folk, and, and, and that is a folk that your hundred dollars can feed, brother. You just tithe. It's all tithing is just giving and God giving back face, face rather on your face. Okay, so when you say giving, is it giving to the church or is it just giving to St. Jude's or your favorite charity? What, what, when you say giving, what are you talking about? Because be I was your, always taught that it was given to the church. It, to your, your, your church, brother. It ain't always just, I'm going to give my $100 this week to the church. But you bypass somebody that's hungry. You bypass somebody that is in need to give your church something. And most folks don't even know where the money goes when the church get it. I like to see a form on what we're doing here at the church. All you just give. All you supposed to do is just give. Don't worry about where, where the money goes. Yes, I do. I gave you my hundred dollars. I can't work. I can't. I can't ask you where my hundred dollars. What did it go on? You, we done had a building fund fifty years. We ain't got a door knob. We ain't got a nail. We, the roof is leaking. Come on, bypass the hustle. Um, what What is your thoughts on uh, some of the more prominent pastors in the world? Um, Dr. Tony Evans, I believe he's a doctor. Uh, T.D. Jakes, for that matter. I, you know, I got no thoughts. Uh, uh, when Jakes first came out, I, I, hell, I followed him. I, I've been to uh, his church in Dallas years ago. I ain't got nothing against uh, Jakes. I listen to a lot of Things and I pick up a lot of things uh, from Jake's. They even say I look like Jake's with this beard, this great beard. I don't know if that's true, but are you yeah. sure that's not you saying that you look like Jake's? Uh, that's what I, I've had a few folks tell me, but that ain't even important. Uh, yeah. But I'm not, you know, I don't worry about myself, myself about another man's ministry. So 2022, you was arrested. What was that about? What What is a pastor doing being arrested? I, to be I've been arrested before 2022. I've been in jail before 2022. But not as a pastor. Yeah. You've been arrested before 2022 yes. as a pastor. Yes. So what is a pastor doing go getting back, arrested? Go. Same thing every other motherfucker gets arrested for. Shit. They lock preachers up. I just don't stay long. Because you want to do my history. See, you I don't have to about me. I, 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 I guess I don't see how a pastor, a man of, of Christ. Man, come off that bullshit. Come on, friends. I know you're doing this for your show, but come off that bullshit. Okay? Don't bullshit me. Bullshit the folks that's watching. We're just going to jail all the damn time. <laughs> they go to jail for things like touching little boys. That you don't do. Oh, boy. Now, don't, don't come with that motherfucking shit if I touch the little boy. I said that you don't do. We know that. Oh, okay. 
Now, I didn't touch some pussy. And I ain't went to jail for none of that. But uh, yes, I did. Way back in the day, I got arrested for trying to buy some pussy. Excuse me? Way back in the day, some years ago, solicitation. Okay. I saw this pretty girl walking down the street and she came up to the car and asked me, did I want some? And she told me she'd give it to me for X numbers of dollars. I said, okay. They, I didn't go to jail. They gave me a citation. But all pussy is, is, is to be bought. Don't get mad at me if I if I wanted to buy some pussy and shit. So, yeah. That happened to me. What 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 do you mean? Oh, it's all to be bought. What what is that? What what does that mean? All, tell I buy my wife's pussy. I pay all the bills in my house. She rides good. She smells good. She looks good. Don't you don't you think when I get something from my wife, I don't I don't pay for it? Come on, friends. Okay, Pastor. I, I guess I, I I didn't expect anything less from you. <laughs> um, All right, you got a wife. I do. Okay, if you stop paying the bills at your house, uh, whatever your obligations are at the house, do you think your wife gonna give you some? I, I would hope so. No, she ain't. You don't even hope that. You you know Bella. I know you're saying that for the audience, but you know your wife. <laughs> and you know your wife. If your wife was in the studio with you right now, she'd say, hell no. You're going to take care of these children, you're going to take care of me, and you're going to take care of these bills, or you ain't getting them. Simple as that. Simple as that. Let's talk about the arrest. Let's come before uh, 2022. Um, let's go to 2012. I'm a controversial figure in the city. I fought judges, police. My show is an expose. 2012. There was a picture floating around. And I'm offering you this. You didn't ask me this, uh, but I'm an open book, brother. Uh, there was a picture floating around on Facebook of a small child performing fellatio on a grown man. I was called and asked to see if I could find this man. I had just fallen found some twins that were kidnapped and put into sex trafficking. So I took the picture and put it on my Facebook page. Of the man? Of the the picture of the man and the woman and the little child. Okay. I put it, I put it on, on my Facebook page. The police director and I were almost really in, enemies because I had exposed some things on the Memphis Police Department. Next day, I get a call from the head of a tel local television station. They said, there's a press conference going on down here. I said, well, you know, they only invite me to no press conference. He said, no, it's about you. I said, about me. And that picture you got on your page. I was called into questioning about that picture that I put on my page to try to save a child. They thought at that point they had me. I was charged with sexual exploitation of a child. 
especially aggravate, it was three charges because of the picture. I was arrested, $150,000 bond. I told him once, just let me get to a phone. I paid the bond and got out. I was indicted the next year. They had no reason to hold me because thousands of people had seen the picture. So they offered me a plea deal. That is, we're going to let you let you go, you ain't gonna have to do no time or nothing at that. But this is what my lawyer, and I went and got Steve Faris. Steve Faris is the same attorney. I don't know whether you remember the white nurse that shot a preacher husband in the bed and he got her off. Yeah. Well, well, that's who I hired. And um The deal that they offered me was no jail time, but I had to register as a sexual offender. I told my lawyer, I said, go back in there and tell him I said, fool shit. I'm not going to sign on to that. I went to court the following year. And it's got to be 20, 13, the latter part of 13, yeah. And the judge, which was a black man, could see that they were trying to do everything they could to railroad me. And he said, over the bench, everybody will be treated fairly in, in my court even Thaddeus Matthews and said, even Thaddeus Matthews. But all those charges were dropped. They got me with, after in with evidence. I don't know to this day what evidence, but after over $100,000 in legal fees, uh, okay, they gave me probation. So I just threw that in for, just keep you there. As far as 2022 is, young lady, I used to screw years ago. I put her in the business. I paid her bills until she thought she was as big as her as me, and her her name was as big as mine. We had been we had our fallouts and things. We would we hadn't screwed. I know in 10 years. Somebody got to her and said, go after Thaddeus Mantis. So she came at me. And she came out with this lie that I was, I had raped her year, date raped her years ago. I said, well, goddamn, I was dating, date raping you every day at your house. And I had the pictures to show of us. That didn't wash. So she thought on the church. His church ain't for real. I said, well, my church is a Tennessee corporation. It's a 501c3. So she got a bogus, she tried to get a bogus restraining order. It didn't work. The judge saw through it so that I laughed at her on my way out the courtroom. She jumps up and jumps on my back in the courtroom. Uh, I sued her for detriment, detriment of character. Uh, all the criminal charges were dropped. And they were dropped simply. First of all, they had no merit. Second of all, the new DA, when he was elected, election night, him and her dancing together. I thought, oh, no, you can't try me. And uh, 
you and her, boots and bullies. So my lawyer got everything dropped. So that's Walla on off the duck's neck or, or whatever it says. Wow. You 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 are nothing short of an extremely interesting and and controversial human being. But I, I, I appreciate your honesty and your, your candor. Like I said, I could talk to you all day. Um, and you truly are an open book because I didn't expect you to go into that much detail um, when I asked the question. So thanks for, for answering. If you don't mind, can I can I ask you one more question before I let you go? What, what, what is this when you did have your, your church open? You you. Did you have a twerking contest up in your church? I mean, many people do praise dancing, but I ain't never seen a church that has a, a twerking contest. It was not a twerking contest. My church had a gymnasium on the building. And we would have Parties are playing in in the uh, gym. We would do shows. <laughs> Excuse me. We would do blues shows in the gymnasium. We would do wrestling matches in the gym. And this particular day, we were just dancing. People were just dancing and having a good time. And all the women right now, they twerking. And somebody videotaping a group of women twerking. And sent it to somebody. And it was all over social media. So it wasn't a twerking contest. And uh, if we had one, had I had a twerking com contest, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. I said again, you are a very, very uh, interesting and fascinating human being. I, I, I thank you for giving me this time, Pastor. And and you know, I I I, I look forward to putting this interview out there and seeing you know let, because at the end of the day, you do something that many church folks don't do, and I'll give you this. You are who you say you are. You don't pretend to be holier than thou. You live your truth. And I think that um, one of the things that keeps a lot of people out of the church mm -hmm. is they find people who are holy rollers. And every time you see them, they, they, they are quoting a scripture. They find them to be very hypocritical and phony, to say the least. Um, I don't think anybody can ever accuse you of being phony. Um, but with that being said, I thank you for your time. And uh, I look forward well, I'll to give, I'll give you a few more minutes. Uh, then I got to give me something to eat. You know, I, you know, I had a heart attack a few months ago. Uh, I had a stroke last year. Uh, but God is good. And God is keeping me around for an assignment. And I've, I've asked God, I became the custom pastor in December of 2017. It's made my name known all over the country and even overseas. And I, I, I challenge God. Why? Why me? And why the cussing pastor? And God brought to, my, to mind a story that you can read in the Bible of the disciples on the ship 
with the fishing nets. You remember that, don't you? I do. You remember they had been fishing all day and they hadn't caught anything. And Jesus came on board the ship and they wanted to know Jesus, we, we've been fishing all day and we ain't caught nothing. Jesus said, cast your nets on the other side. Same boat. Same wall. But they took those same nets and put it on the other side of the ship. And they had more fish than they could use. Brother Press. I'm just a fisher of men. I wish I could play my my rap song. Can you hear it, friends? I can't hear it. What, are you playing it? We can't hear it, brother. Yeah, okay. I got a song called Fisher of Men. I've wrote about five, five different songs, but you can't catch them. You can't clean a fish till you catch them. And the the organized church, as we know it, has been using the wrong bait. We've been of the mindset, man, that you got to be holier than thou. You got to fall out. You got to run. You got to speak in tongues. All of that. And that closes the door on the on the man that's been out there. He's been a drug addict. He's been a drug dealer. He's been the burglar. He's been the abuser. But here he is. And he wants to change his life. Don't want to burglarize no more. He don't want to beat his children and his wife no more. He's not dressed like the other folk at the church. And all you want to do when he get there is hoop and holler. You're not speaking to him. And you're not speaking to the ills of his life, brother. I get so many people and young people in my inbox, especially on Instagram that I give a word to, brother, that no matter who you are and where you are in life, God loves you. If you're the homosexual, God loves you. If you're the dope man, God loves you. And there is room at the cross for each and one of us. All of us have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. We're all unfit vessels. But this world, and, and, and when I go out on, and I've been on a tour, I call it bullshit from the pulpit. One, the dance music, we stopped the dance music. And I just talk to you. I ain't taking over my Bible and earn your books. No, 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 no. Let me talk to you. Why do you feel the way that you feel about life? Why are you facing suicidal thoughts? Somebody has told you they've cursed you. 
and told you you ain't nobody, you ain't going to never be nobody. You might as well, and Satan has come and visited you in your mind and told you, well, take life. You might as well die. Man, and, and I talked to that brother and said, man, I've been everywhere you I've been depressed. I've been just, I've been broke. I've been without a car. I can't remember not having a woman, but uh, I, I, I've, I've, I've been all these places. And if God was good enough to heal me and save me, what can he do for you? I share the story that I know God has a mission for me. Several years ago, not in the house I live in now, I had come home that night. My present wife was in my house waiting for me to get off of my, I did my television show. I was on cable every night then. I dropped my assistant off. My garage, man, was off track. You know, you had to get out and lift it up. Mm -hmm. I pulled up. In my car, with my diamonds on, my bracelet on, I'm driving a Mercedes Benz. I get out and raise my garage door, get back in the car to go into the garage. And before I can close my door, a young fellow has a nine millimeter. In my head, tells me to get out of the car. I get out. By this time, I see two more guys. One guy's being chased by a dog up the street, so he never showed up. But I had a van in my yard. The other young man came to the edge of the van. He's about three feet from me. The man that told me to get out the car said, lay down on the ground. I said, no. If you're going to kill me, you will kill me standing up. Then ask for no money. Then ask for no jewelry. Then ask for the car, keys to the car. Lay down and die. Said, no. The other guy at the edge of the guy, three feet away, opened fire on me, Chris. Bang, bang, bang. Hell, I ran to the other side of the car to get out of the firing range. They took off running. Probably thinking they killed me. Man, I'm sitting on the ground by the, uh, the rear tire of my car. I'm touching myself, man. Because I know I was close enough. I could see the fire coming out of the gun. That's going to be shit. Man, I wasn't hit nowhere. Nowhere. And I knew at that time. Wow. Praise be to God. But go ahead. That God had a mission for me, man. Didn't a bullet nowhere. I'm three feet, man. He was supposed to be able to hit me. If God has not had not grabbed the bill, bullets out of the air, please ask me, that is, were you alone? I said, I thought I was. 
And the white boy looked at me crazy. He said, you thought you was. I said, yeah. But I don't figure out. I had two more passengers. He totally messed up now. He said, who were they? A guy named Grace. And the other one was named Mercy. God gave me grace. And mercy spared my life. I had a stroke last year. I was in the hospital about three, four days. I had a heart attack in September, a massive. And some thought I was, they was putting up on social media, Thaddeus Matthews, then finally met his maker. Uh, but here I am, here I am to talk to you today and talk to your audience. See, many don't know who the cussing pastor is. You, you, you hear the cussing. And please know that some of what I do is entertainment purposes. Uh, I'm an entertainer. I do a show every day. At, I do 300 some shows a day. I am a controversial figure, but I stand for what I believe in and believe what I stand in. And if I stand on it, I'll say it, and I don't care what nobody else thinks about what I say and do. Uh, that's who the cussing pastor is. Uh, boy that was born of a 16-year-old girl in North Memphis, in an area they call New Chicago. No father. Just raised by women. Statistically, I wasn't supposed to make it. Statistically, I looked at some of the people in the neighborhood I grew up with daddies that didn't make it. And if not, say I had a, a praying grandma. You, you, you remember them praying grandmamas? Oh, yeah. Huh? The, the, oh, yeah. I, I had a praying grandmama. They kept telling God to watch over me. And, and, and the word says, the prayers of the righteous, and that was a righteous woman, the prayers of the righteous prevailed much. I'm still living because of some of that old woman's prayers, my friend. That's who the cousin pastor is. Well, Pastor Matthews, again, I thank you for your time. I, I, I think you even the way we close this thing out, um, because that story you just told, mm -hmm. uh, three bullets, mm -hmm. not one of them hitting you. Not one. If that ain't divine intervention, if that ain't God at work, mm. then maybe what you say is absolutely right. He had, well, we know that God has a plan for all of us. Yes. Um, but long before you became the cussing pastor, he knew his plan for you. Yeah. So I would just tell you, um, continue doing what you're doing. I enjoyed our conversation. It lived up to everything I thought it would. And um, should you ever need me, I'm here. And I'd love to do this again, my brother. I I, I love it. Next time we'll talk about some social issues and things of that nature. But I enjoyed this. Make sure I get a take for this so that I can share on all of my, my platforms as well. It's been a pleasure, man. It's been an honor uh, to be on the show. And I don't normally give nobody this much of my time. <laughs> oh, I ain't ate a meal a day. I'm so hungry. And my my wife's went and got me some lunch. I know it's cold by now. 
but man, I've enjoyed this. Uh, believe me, I, I have. Thank you again for inviting me. You're more than welcome. See you, my friend. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.